I was kind of thinking about the recipe for this beer for a few months, and during that time I was sitting at my house reading about, you know, brewing magazines or books, and I was listening to a lot of Frank Zappa music, and, well, one of my favorite songs is Camarillo Brillo, and uh, obviously when I was thinking of a hop bomb with Amarillo in it, and I was listening to that song over and over again, kind of just made sense. Uh, it's 101 IBUs. Um, that's international bittering units for uh, you non-beer geeks out there. Um, it, it's got a nice, sweet, uh, medium mouthfeel. What really makes it uh, unique is the, the four varieties of hops that we use. Uh, we use Columbus for bittering, but what you're getting mainly is from the Centennial, which has a nice citrusy, grapefruit-like flavor. You got Amarillo, which is kind of like a, almost like peachy character to it and the, uh, the Simcoe is really piney, and just the flavor combination of those hops is what really drives this beer. Before I took on a profession in, in brewing, uh, I, was, I was an electrician and I used to be a home brewer, and uh, I used to spend lots of money on commercially available beer, and Imperial Stouts are one of my favorite beers to purchase and consume, and another, I guess a fanatical friend of mine who basically uh, started talking about like, man, if we could have this flavor of this beer and the flavor of this beer, we brewed it the first time and it was like to us, it was the best beer we had ever tasted in our life at the time. Basically started working here. Uh, the brewmaster John had taken a liking to this beer before I even started working here and it was just kind of a natural go to scale it up and make it available to the public. So. Yeah, it's a good move. It's, it's a imperial stout basically uh, that also has an addition of lactose to it. So that adds, um, the lactose is an unfermentable milk sugar. So that adds uh, some, some creamy mouthfeel to it. Copious amounts of oats. So it's also an oatmeal stout. There's a chocolate malt that we source from Belgium. So it's got some nice deep rich chocolate tones to it. There's, there's pretty much no way light can get through this. No matter what angle you try to tip your glass and even at the very, very edge there, you barely get any color other than black. So yeah, the absence of light, you know, just brainstorming on that. and. Um, yeah, total eclipse. This was uh, a couple years ago and I, when I wasn't working here. It was about four years ago. I had it on tap at one of the pubs downtown and I met John, the brewmaster, and he's, he's like, what do you think of this? And I was like, That's, I, I like it. I, I had no idea that Toledo made good beer. I mean, I honestly didn't. I had grown up here. I moved away to go to school and I had just moved back here. So, and he was like, yeah, and, and a friendship was forged on that day of our love of beer and uh, John actually after a while was like we need to get to you at the brewery and we need to join forces to make this happen and so over the course of the three and a half years I've been here um, between John Clint and myself we've really pushed to get these beers out a lot more because we had so much confidence in them and we knew we knew the product we had basically. This is one that if, if you're a hop head, you're definitely gonna be happy with it. It's a centennial hop, so there's so much floral aroma when you smell it. And then also, you know, tasting it, there's, you know, that bitterness that hits, but then there's a nice sweet balance that just really rounds it out, but still reminding you that it's, it's definitely an India Pale Ale. Originally brewed in 1838 in Toledo, it was a local, obviously, originally from Toledo, up until 71? Or 72? Yeah. When the Miller Brewing Company bought it. Meister Brau. Meister Brau, yes. Of Chicago brought it. There you go. And I believe it was like four years later that uh, Miller bought it. And that is actually the original light beer. When you see that light logo, Miller Light, L I T E. Oh, that's actually Buckeye. 1995 is when our current owners bought the rights back to the Buckeye. Um, they couldn't buy the rights to the recipe, but from what I've been told by people who used to drink it in the 70s and currently drink it now, it's pretty close to the original recipe. So. It's our flagship beer. Uh, 
It's a, it's a historic beer. It represents Toledo as a whole. Everybody knows what it is. Toledo's got a huge brewing past. Um, Buckeye Brewing at one time was up to 300,000 barrels in a year. I've heard a lot of stories from other people about people that worked here and everything like that. A lot of, a lot of drinking going on when they were brewing and, and bottling and everything like that back then. I heard it was a pretty good time. We're more than just a brewery and a brew pub. We have this amazing his historical building that's beautiful. You know, it was originally commissioned as a hotel. Um, it is allegedly haunted, which also adds a, a lure, you know, to some people. And, and just the fact that we have, we offer these great beers, really good food, and it's, it's a really cool building to walk around in and just, and just explore and look. And, and especially, you know, the outdoors and the brick and the exposed brick, I think is so beautiful. And I think people have an appreciation for that. Major Oliver has taken the form of <laughs> Tim Allen in a portrait right at the top of the stairs. Tim Allen from Michigan posed for a picture, hand painted, dressed up like this guy, Oliver, Major Oliver. So I think you guys should show that. It's not true. <laughs> it's not true. Uh, 